Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Games. Today we are taking a look at a title. From history's most infamous publisher LJN, yes the rainbow of crap is a scarlet letter. And the world of NES cartridges calling out an eternal warning to innocent souls who value their time amongst the living. LJN games are often maligned for being rushed low. Quality titles that carried on the legacy of making a quick buck on an intellectual property the way ET did on the Atari 2600 since Jaws is a universal movie studio property it is easy to group it with all the other poorly programmed or rushed out the door LJN releases. But unbeknownst to the internet. Jaws was only published by the rainbow of lowered expectations and developed by Atlas who would go on to be one of the world's most critically acclaimed studios and is currently owned by Sega. Well it may be fun to just go with the crowd and point out the games. Simple looking graphics, single screen gameplay and call it a budget title you would be missing out hidden inside the mostly non-scrolling screens you see here is a pick-up-and-play shooter rpg hybrid experience that combines gameplay elements from both arcade and computer games from the early 1980s so why does the opinion expressed in this review differ so much from the common view on this game it may all come down to judging a book by its cover for both obvious and unobvious reasons Jaws was a movie known for overloading the human nervous systems when it was first released in movie theaters. The world had never seen a movie monster so real and as word spread so did news of people having medical issues due to anxiety caused by some of the film's now famous scenes. It became one of the most popular films of all time and dawned the age of high-budget Hollywood blockbuster action movies. This sounds like the perfect experience to be adapted into a video game, take on the role of a character in a Steven. Spielberg action movie. So it's a bit of a letdown when you start out controlling a sailboat that will immediately break. You then control a scuba diver who was pixel swapped from an Atari 2600 game. Visually the game doesn't quite live up to the movie's legacy is what I'm trying to say. The somewhat bleak visuals actually help to build an atmospheric presentation that sucks you into the experience of hunting in the endless ocean. The game's developers made excellent use of the NES color palette and made some beautiful Looking animations for some of the enemies you fight in the game. Most importantly the game plays very fast with no slowdown. The most impressive part of the game is in the final sequence that incorporated a first-person perspective and multiple layers of parallax. Scrolling. For NES purists it is truly a sight to behold. So with some pros and cons too. Consider I award the graphics in Jaws a score of 3.0 out of 5. It doesn't bring Spielberg. Magic to life on the NES and most of the gamma play is presented on a non-scrolling single screen. But sometimes a budget presentation can be just as enjoyable. The endless blue ocean you explore helps create a feeling of being isolated out at sea like you are right. Inside the movie. What the visuals lack in flair they make up for in details that are much easier to see with a modern HD display. The best looking graphics in Jaws ironically are the ones you'll see the least. The final boss battle in Jaws might be the most impressive thing seen on the NES when it was released in 1987. If the developers would have incorporated some mini boss fights with the impressive 3D first person perspective used for the final battle, the game would have earned a much more positive reputation. The term atmospheric sound design evolved from a time where formal entertainment was nothing more than storytelling with musical elements. From discovering notes on a French horn that sounded like a duck to the simple composition that made you hear Psycho Norman. Eight stab his victims, music helped make the world of entertainment seem all the more real. The famous Jaws orchestrated intro music set a new benchmark and was attributed as the psychological cause behind some of the more severe reactions moviegoers experienced. The NES game Jaws doesn't change the world like its movie soundtrack did, but it does help create an immersive experience. The main part of the game has music that could add. First seem minimalistic, but is actually groundbreaking design in the world of video games. This simple approach to building atmosphere over an enjoyable melody would take off in the next decade. Legendary titles like Quake and the original Resident Evil took the same approach, so it's really something to go back to a game on the NES and find the same level of quality design. Sound effects are also exceptional quality for the NES, but it should be noted I am 
judging them as they sound on the Retron 5 with enhanced audio. When you acquire a power. Up the audio tone does a complete 180 and has some of the most vibrant audio you'll hear. From an NES game. On a scale of 1 to 5 I give the overall sound a perfect 5. I highly recommend giving this game a second try on modern hardware just to experience the difference in sound alone. I simply did not enjoy the audio in this game back in 1988 when I tried it for the first time like I did now playing on the Retron 5. There is some advanced sound design that wasn't going to come out of the Magnavox CRT model that advertised it was a full-spectrum color TV. Perfect example of how the Retron 5 can do things original hardware can't do. The gameplay controls feature some of the most impressive latency you'll find in retro gaming. The ability to shift the main scuba diver charter left and right so quickly feels akin to playing with an analog dial controller. The different forms of gameplay are easy learn and are for the most part essentially well playing early arcade games. The only drawback I could find in the control scheme was attacking from the boat seemed distinctly unintuitive compared to the rest of the experience. But such little to criticize I feel the game earns a 4.5 out of 5 for game control. The very high challenge pushes your reflexes, but your tiny character flies around the screen. With advanced precision. While some have been critical about how the main character is. Hard to change direction with it is because the game engine accurately replicates the feeling of being underwater in what may be the strangest claim made on this channel I feel the main character in Jaws. Controls just like a hockey player in the classic EA Sports NHL series. If you know how. To use your forward momentum to maneuver around opponents in that game series you'll have. A lot of fun with Jaws. How much fun may come down to the actual hardware you are playing. On. Plain and simple Jaws is a very fun but frustratingly unfair game that strips you of. Your power-ups when you need to continue. Given these power-ups were acquired by. Essentially grinding away like you would in a RPG this drags your experience down but there is a solution to this issue not available in the 1980s and that solution is a quick save. Yes if you are brave enough to play a NES game on some device capable of quick saving it becomes a much more manageable experience. The difficulty in this game essentially buries you if you lose one of your three lives. Much like vertical scrolling. Shooters that leave you with no power-ups against impossible odds, Jaws has an increasing Difficulty that doesn't ease up if you have to continue with limited firepower. There is still a lot of memorization needed to succeed in the later moments of hunting Jaws but it is an organic well-rounded experience that makes you think like you're really out at sea. Hunting a true monster. As you scour the ocean for resources you'll eventually get attacked by Jaws but if you just channel your inner Vince Vaughn you'll have your little scuba diver deking. As the giant predator like Jeremy Rowe A. Nick, you'll continue to fight other sharks and Collect shells that are for some reason currency accepted by the in-game vendor who weaponizes your boat. While writing this review I had a realization that Jaws is remarkably similar in its game design with the original Diablo. The ocean is the underworld you and the ports you level up in are the town of Tristram. The final boss is approachable from the onset and it's all about building up a character that can take him on. Perhaps the one change that could open this game up to a new audience would be to make it a roguelike that allows you to only come to port when you die and do away with the continue system. So is Jaws the greatest game in the history of mankind that somehow fuses the gameplay of classic titles NHL 94 and Diablo years before either title was released? No. Unfortunately not. While Jaws fails to bend the walls of reality it is a fun and unique title that should be experienced by all who want to explore the classic NES library. So. On a score of 1 to 5 I feel Jaws earns a 4.0 out of 5. It is very surprising that this was a game designed for a home console and not a, a computer. The abstract game design combined with a very simple at first play mechanics may seem underwhelming if you don't take the time to learn enemy attack patterns and the game's unique underwater physics. Once you get the timing down you'll find yourself in what I feel is the first survival horror adventure preceding the accredited Sweet Home by Capcom released three years later in 1990. The computer AI can get ridiculous once you are powered up, but it wouldn't be a true survival horror experience unless the game forced you to think about every step you take. Yes, there is actually a deep strategy to success that requires you to avoid combat in certain situations much like you would exploring a mansion full of zombies.
and Conclusion Jaws should not be grouped in with other LJN bombs like Back to the Future. Or Bill and Ted. It's not an elite NES title, but it has some groundbreaking game design. That has been overshadowed by its high level of challenge. Jaws manages to blend some of the best elements of the simple single-screen action games that came before it with concepts like survival and resource gathering that would be groundbreaking concepts in the years that followed. If only the talented developers at Atlas threw in one more genre into the mix and made it a rogue like the opinion expressed in this review might not be so polarizing. At the very least someone should attempt a hack of this sandbox game that was before its time. I'm also very interested in trying out the 1989 versions for home computers where the development didn't have to confine to data limitations of cartridges. Thanks again for watching this classic review on computer games. Take care. Mm -hmm.